sound a hero who bore this land with your blood. Glory to glory, we rise and never to fall. Here in the nation, flowing with milk and honey. Glory, glory, glory to the Father for making you a nation that lives forevermore. Ambazonia, land of freedom, you shall live in plenty, peace in our need. And your children shall be like the stars above. The most I got be the watchman of this nation. Ambazonia, land of freedom. You shall live in peace in our need. And your children shall be like the stars above. The most I got be the watchman of this nation. That anthem to us now is an inspiration. It inspires us to strive to attain the goals for which we are all fighting to secure a country for of our own where that flag is going to stand tall. And that, 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 that anthem would honor those who have sacrificed to make sure that that flag is standing tall in Boya. When an American or the British or any country sing their national anthem when they're not in war, it is a celebration of their country. Mm -hmm. When Ambazonians sing our anthem, it is part of what you just said, but there's another element there, and that element is that of defiance, would you say? Yeah, it is defiance, it's a sense of identity, because it is, it is telling uh, some of these people that this is who we are, and you are not going to take that from us. And the children sing it, because remember that we have said that this is an idea and it is an idea for which our people are prepared to die and that anthem reinforces that idea in the people so whether they are children from the beginning they start singing this anthem remember that like, that is how the republic came with their own anthem and they, they, they no they didn't come with their own it was dream to them by the well, french well well they, they claim that they own it now yes so they would make uh, us sing it because you have to be able to sing it, to own it, to be part of it. Yes. So what this anthem is doing to us now, especially when I look at those little boys singing it and owning it, it builds that idea in them and it gives them that sense of nationalism and statehood and nationhood for which we are striving. So they are going to fight for it, they are going to defend it and every time they play that anthem in their mind, it sends them up the hill to go and chase that dream for which we are all fighting for. Yes, and it is and it is the chasing of that gem that creates the defiant factor and makes La Republic become hostile to the anthem and hostile to our leadership and everything that that anthem is trying to stand for. And the children shall be like the stars above. The ones I got be the watchman of this nation. Ambazonia, land of freedom. You shall live in plenty, meet in our needs. And the children shall be like the stars above. The ones I got be the watchman of this nation. Uh, the 5th of uh, January came and went and and that was and, and it was celebrated 
that celebrated it was it was uh it was commemorated it was it was uh it was observed nation uh, worldwide by Amazonia because of what la republic uh did la republic in collaboration with france and nigeria did in adopting uh seseko his team and all the other uh people that were that were adopted from Nigeria back into the Republic against international law. We want to take a look and see how this day was was uh, how how see what different Ambazonians worldwide did. Uh, did you spend time following events around the around the world? Yeah, I mean um, there were celebrations all over the world, and uh, we are glad for all the people who came out to tell the world uh, what happened to us on the fifth of January two thousand and eighteen and how uh, that situation has not changed. I think you have a couple of countries uh, that featured in this commemoration. Yes, yes. The first one that I took or, or that we reviewed was, was, was Germany. Uh, that gathering took place in Stuttgart. It was uh, hosted by uh, Dr. Ngasa. We have a purpose today. That's why he's telling his people to be orderly so that to pay attention. But of course, when people have come from all over Germany, they have seen themselves for the first time after many months. They're happy to meet each other, but it's not a problem. Let me give the call them back to order and then we'll continue with the discussion. So, today he's saying that we are here to demand from the unconditional release of our president, President Susi Kwaitabe. So, let me turn the camera back to him, let him continue. So, he wants to concentrate now on that. So, DM. Ladies and gentlemen, we are having 50,000 flushing in Nakba, Land, Nigeria. We are having about 50,000 billion flushing We have over 400,000 internally displaced. Take a look at the pictures. Yeah, people of Stuttgart. Ladies and gentlemen, we are begging you to support us. Order for our leaders to be released unconditionally and immediately. President Sisiko Ayutabe and his team. So, I'm missing craft. I'm having been there. I'm having that's his craft. So carry it up. Those who can carry it up, you can carry it up. So let's take a look. So you should carry it up so that the people of Sudgard can have a better look. Dear people of Sudgard, women and men, we're begging for your support. In order for our president to be released and president and his team who were kidnapped one year ago in a hotel in Nigeria. One of the things that also amazed me about the situation in Germany is, is what they were doing in terms of educating the Germans. They did a lot of talking to the population and, um, and engaging them in, in what's going on. Yes, and uh, you saw a couple of them come and speak uh, in German. Uh, uh, telling the German public exactly why they are out there, mm -hmm. what happened on, on that day uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. and what they want the German public to do. And I think that is very important because we have seen uh, a lot of support from some of the German uh, MPs yes. who have come out even in the, the European Parliament or in the German Parliament itself speaking on our behalf. So it is because of such actions communicating with the local uh, population, the local population. And educating them. And educating them, yes. the, the local stakeholders, because you know 
how important the German RTZ and all those organizations are in, in, in with investments in the Republic. Mm -hmm. So when you go out there, it is important that we communicate and you communicate with these people in a language that they understand. Because with that language, they see you as one of them. And they can easily identify with some of the problems that you are facing because you speak the language that they speak. What I was going to say, which you kind of touched a little bit on it, is that when, you, when we communicate our, our problems to Westerners, I'll just generalize it to Westerners, mm -hmm. I think they, they, they understand us more than any, more than most Africans would, especially more than the people of La Republic would, because the governments of the West are empowered by their people. And so they respond to their people. Mm -hmm. And their people are very in tune with their problems in order to communicate them to their leaders so that their leaders can take action. Mm -hmm. And so when we come and we're saying and we're telling them our story, I think they, they, it's, it's easier for them to understand it and internalize it and understand us even more than the citizens of La Republic because the citizens of La Republic, even to today, a lot of them, because they haven't demonstrated. Maybe they understand what we're fighting for, but they haven't demonstrated that. And you can, you know, when I watch, and I'm going to say this, when I watch the videos of what was happening to the citizens of Ambazonia that were killed in the streets of La Republic and dragged behind motorcycles, mm -hmm. what, 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 what it told me was that these are people who are lost. One, they don't understand what we're fighting for because, because our fight is a really a universal fight. Which is why when we take it outside our own communities, especially in the West, we stand tall when we say it. And we say it like human beings because the response we are giving to the problems we are solving are human responses. You know what I'm saying? A slave will not respond like that. So when I see people who, who buy the lies of their government and then turn around... You know, some of those people they were dragging on the street where were, were, there were people living with them. Mm -hmm. They're not even the, uh, the, the fake Amber boys who they accuse when I'm going to their villages. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's why I'm saying the Westerners understand when we come and tell them about our problems than even some of our people. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> if we can just pick a little bit on that. If that situation that I just described that happened in Bangoran, if it had happened in the West, so, for example, Charlottesville, where we know, mm -hmm. where this guy went and killed people. Mm -hmm. That person riding that motorcycle, because the, the picture, the video is there. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't take the police or the, uh, the, um, the administrative authorities any difficulty to find that person. Because what that person has done is, if the Republic is a state, as some people claim, and they are a sovereign state, a, a state would prosecute that individual for committing a crime against humanity. But because this is a regime, a junta, that is what the regime does. So it would not surprise them when they are, one of their citizens goes and does something like that and nobody says anything about it. What they do is they reward them because we know Atangan Jipo came with things and uh, supplied them. You want to even ask yourself, if you look at the response time when this thing is supposedly supposed to have happened and, and the instantaneous response the very next day or less than 48 hours, they got the, some things have been brought to give to the people who they claim their houses have been burned. You begin to ask yourself, was this thing planned or is it something that this government... Because we don't know this government as a very responsive government. No, I was going to say that criminals don't persecute criminals when you're trying to say that uh, La Republic should, but that's, should, should go after the criminals. No, that's, that's criminals don't persecute criminals. That's what I'm saying. That, that is what I'm saying to underscore what you said about the people in the West. Sir, so, please come. The, I saw... Yeah. Today's event is organized by the Southern Cameroon Community in Germany, SCCG. It's an NGO, a legal NGO. We have an information desk. We have an info desk. Please go to our desk there, behind there. You can see it there. And go there. 
send all the tweets to the German Chancellor, Dr. Angela Merkel. These are people, our leaders, Sisuko Ayuktabe and his team. It's a matter of life and death. One of the Ambazonian participants in the in the in the in the, uh, in, the in that in that event actually took time explaining to the Germans about why you see this immigration coming to Germany. Mm -hmm. That it is because of this lawlessness and these uh, criminals who are who are put to 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 take care of citizens that end up, uh, uh, you know, committing the crimes we're talking about, and then these citizens have to escape out of out of out of uh, out of out of their their own homelands yeah and uh I'm, I'm glad that you said that and that the lady i think it was a lady yeah she was a lady it was a lady that took upon herself to explain to her host country uh, germany and the citizens of stuttgart i am better that dear comrades we are gathered here today because we want to give you the opportunity not to the, the, to say later we ha we didn't know we haven't we didn't know so today you have the chance to inform yourselves we want to remember we we spoke about the migration pact at the national at the national uh, uh, level about migration pact we must always know. The people who leave their countries, who have to leave their countries, they have a reason for that. And we, if we don't have the cause, we don't, cannot fight the, the, the cause. Then we should not be surprised when we have another wave of waves of, of uh, refugees coming to us, obviously Germany. So you know most of the time what is played in the media in the West is that immigration is due to pull factors. You know, there are push and there are pull factors. The pull factors that they normally present in the media is probably economic opp opportunities that people are running to come because of the economic opportunities. But they ignore these push factors, which is what this lady was describing to them. The things that force people to leave their homes and walk distances on foot, drowning in the Mediterranean uh, uh, Sea to be able to get to Europe. The Cameroon community in Germany is not sleeping. We are part and parcel of the big bond of southern Cameroonians scattered all over the world as a consequence of the invasion and occupation of our country some 58 years ago by the French Cameroonians forces manipulated by France. But uh, we have to let the world know that our, we have come of age we, the generation that was born in uh, southern Cameroon, we have come of age and we are saying enough is enough. We have been joined by the generation of never again Amazonians. Those that will never go anywhere and the generation of Watana Wata, Niyana, Watana Wata, so, we are here in Stuttgart, and um, let's go to the music and join our president. It was a very, very uh, uh, well attended event, and uh, and uh, there's so many elements in that. In that, in, there's so many things that took place in that uh, in that event, uh, uh, and I I know that I know that one of the things that I know in all our events, pa is the singing is the singing tell me about these songs tell me those i don't want you to tell me those that capture you because they, they, they're many but tell me what you think about the uh, the role of this singing in all these events well uh singing does a couple of things for for people 
um, you know about the the, uh, the songs during the slave times in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, so what singing does is that it brings uh, people together. It brings those emotions, and people can put those those emotions into song, and it empowers them. It gives them the courage to, and it, it brings participation. Mm -hmm. So there, there is nobody who is just standing around and and just people get involved in those songs the messages mm -hmm. that they pass on to the community that is listening or to the world or whoever they are addressing or just remind themselves or just remind themselves about why they are there what is happening and what they should be done until we reach for ya we want to find the magic man turn it our way oh until we reach for ya <laughs> until we reach Boya, until we reach Boya, we will never, never end our journey halfway. Oh, until we reach Boya. I mean, that song has a chilling message for La Republic. And I am, and our people sing it all over the place with fervor. What you say? Yes, yeah, it is not only for La Republic. What it does to La Republic is that it it sends it it defeats or it, it I, I don't know what adjective to use, but let me look at the international community, what it does to the international community. Mm -hmm. Because what it do, it does to the international community is that it shows a sense of resolve and determination Absolutely. in our people. Absolutely. Because they keep hearing us saying that this journey is not going to end until we get to Boya. So they see that resolve and then now they are responding to it. For La Republic, it just makes them throw their hands and say, what, what else can we do? Yes. Because we have killed these people, we have raped these people, we have maimed them, we have imprisoned them, and they keep telling us that this journey is not going to end until they get to Boya. That you, what you just mentioned is what took place in the last two years. Mm -hmm. They have destroyed our economy. They have destroyed our politics. They have destroyed our culture. They have burned our villages. They 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 burn over two hundred villages, mm -hmm. and we continue to sing the same song. Mm -hmm. So what does that say? That it, it, it says that until you kill all of us, mm -hmm. and that is not possible because even Adolf Hitler could not do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a song that has an incredible, an incredible, uh, it's one that captures our, our determination, our aspiration in a way that I don't think any other song does. Exactly. So you can see what these songs and dance and the messages that we put out there bring a different flavor to our determination and our resolve to be a free people. Absolutely, absolutely. Now there's another, as I was listening, as I was watching the, 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 these people in Germany, there's another one that they brought. Some of their familiar song and all they need to do is just throw in one word and then that song changes from what it is and become a song of the revolution. You know, like the song where they sang about, they started calling the names of each of the people who have been captured. And, and that song just, uh, 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 become become an amber liberation song different from what it was originally composed. This is, this is an unfair question, but I will ask it. Do you know how these songs come about? Who sits down and, 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 and figure them out? And how do they spread? Well, um, if you look at that German, German, the Stuttgart, let me not say Germany because mm -hmm. we well, are not, Germany is in Stuttgart. Well, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I want to localize no, it. No, Stuttgart, Stuttgart is in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to localize it because yes. uh, I, I heard that there were other uh, instances in Berlin, but we have not seen that. But let me talk about the, the people in Stuttgart. Okay. I think what that shows you is some level of organization 
within that Stuttgart community mm-hmm. where uh, they can probably, if they don't rehearse these things, but they get together and they, the person who is leading the songs can get the people to follow. It shows some level of organization. Do you think they rehearse them though? I don't know if they rehearse I them. I don't think they do. I, I don't. But the way it was flowing, the way it was flowing, even if they don't rehearse them, but they have some kind of a leadership and people are ready to follow whoever is leading in, in the in the song or in, like Dr. Ngasa was doing. Yes. So it flows easily. Yes. You know, people are not there. People, other people making commentaries on the side, people taking videos and everybody's running left and right and things like that. Yes. You saw how they stood behind and, and uh, Dr. Ngasa was out there doing what he was doing. So there's a level of coordination. There's a level of organization. And in that setup, it is very easy for those songs to flow easily and for people to... And there is a rhythm. There's, there are the drums. Oh, the drummers were incredible. Yeah, so there are the drums. So it is easy, you know... We used to go to these folklore uh, events in, in the village mm-hmm. eh, where somebody would just stand right there and instantaneously compose a song. Yeah. Mommy tell me say no go la republic wonderful. Mommy tell me say no go la republic wonderful. We go la republic the Kiwa people wonderful. We go la republic the Lewa sisters wonderful. We go la republic the road we promote wonderful. A B C A B C. Wonderful. based on the event that is happening at that time so these are things that we have grown up with and i'm glad that some of us still have those talents to be able to use for questions like this yes and i one of the things i want to say is that i think when like the public because these are people who don't even know us mm-hmm. and and so and so some of these songs are songs that tell that 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 that, that that are very generic in our in our in our, in our upbringing. Mm-hmm. When we keep saying there were two countries that came together, and there will always be two countries, like Republic has worked really hard to make it they are fake country by by trying to make us become them and they failed in all of that but what makes us us remains and and part of that is in these songs these songs that we hear growing up these songs that and so you can see a song that we already know in a different context and during our liberation one of our very creative uh leading singer just takes a name and throws in there and changes that song totally yeah it just adapts it to the situation of the day it just adapts it to the situation of the day i would like to welcome one of the victims who happens to be amongst us barista nanova wow barista nanova wow so barista nanova is going to come to front camera this is great wow Oh. It is my great pleasure so. to present you in front of the German community in Stuttgart. For the very first time. This is great. Fellow Ambazonians, we have an honor here. Ambazonia, oh yeah. Yes. Wow. Ambazonia, oh yeah. Oh yes. yes. I'll talk of PG. You're welcome. Mama, you're welcome. Oh. Um, I believe you're overwhelmed for seeing the amount of people that really don't come out today. The rain and the cold, some of you will be used to yet, but then will be forced for the out. Uh, I know how much all we be heard to wait for the apple this in the last year. But I believe, say, with the effort, say, all we don't put that in. Sooner or later, we will be forced for this one. Leaders. Amen! I want to thank all those who uh, join me on Twitter. I can see some of them today for the first time, but they don't be very active. And thank you now. And I hope they all will continuously push beer for this one leader. Thank you. All right. Wow. Thank you very much, Marina Nanova. After this, we will have a meeting with her, and we can know a bit more. Uh, in Germany, Pa, Naloa B showed up. Yeah, well, uh, Naloa B showed up. And uh, it is interesting what she said. Because what she said was that she would have wished not to be out commemorating this day in Stuttgart, but to be with uh, her friends 
our leaders in the dungeons of La Republic. And the question is, how did she get out? No, I don't want to ask that question. I want to ask because this is what we told Bala, right? Mm -hmm. If she knew that she wanted to be with those people, she could have said, if these people are not coming out, I'm not coming out. Yes. And she will be in the Republic. So we can, I wanted us to first of all address that. Okay. Because some people will see that and say, oh, that is a courageous person. But we need to put it in context. Okay. So yes, the question is, how did she come out? Because she has been unable to answer that question to any of us. She had not addressed it. And I, I was very disappointed with SCBC one time when they went and put her on SCBC and played the national anthem for her. This woman has a lot of questions to answer to us. And there are people who in this struggle have castigated people for nothing, claiming that they did not answer to uh, questions from the interim government. When this lady is sitting there, she has not explained how she and uh, Dr. Ojong got out of prison in Nigeria. She has not explained to anybody. She has not explained how that meeting came about. She is in Stuttgart now. She is protected by the German government. She is not afraid of La Republic. So there is absolutely no reason why she has not told us exactly how that meeting came about, how she got out of the uh, detention and how the other people were transferred to La Republic and she was not transferred. She and Dr. Ojong, those two people, so for all those people who are embracing her, rubbing shoulders with her, and retweeting her tweets, I can tell you deep inside me, every time I see a tweet from her, it bothers me because this to me is uh, until she answers these questions that we are asking, until she tells us how that meeting came about and people had to be pulled from left and right without knowing why they are coming for a meeting and then those people are picked up and then she is picked up with those people and all of a sudden she is let go and those people continue to the republic until those questions are answered i will never never accept or listen to anything that she has to say because she is like those people that you just described yes that come into our midst and pretend that they are one of us in order to get the information that they want and serve their masters. And she hasn't stopped doing that because I think Milan has stated the number of since she came back, she has been trying to get Milan to go to other meetings and things like that. So for all of you who are out there embracing her and pushing her and promoting her and treating her as some kind of a hero, be careful. Be very, very, very careful because she still has a lot to answer to. Maybe you are comfortable with what she has said or she has not said, but me, personally, I am not. Uh, and all of what you said is, uh, is, 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 um, is background by, by, by what Milan said. Because Milan didn't just talk. Milan put out the efforts of this lady to get him to come to that meeting. Mm -hmm. She even paid for Milan to come to that meeting. So this woman, this woman knows what happened. And, and, uh, and like Roger just said, I mean, I don't want to repeat what you said, pa, but what you said, if this, this woman is a suspect. She's a suspect. And we need to stop being naive. If there's any benefit of doubt, we should keep it to ourselves. We shouldn't be giving it to her. And uh, and I don't know any 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 more to add to it, but I'm with you hundred percent that I wouldn't let her come a mile away from me because she does not work for us. I will never, never leave my journey halfway. Oh, until we reach Boya. We will never, never leave my journey halfway. Oh, until we reach Boya. The Southern Cambodians in Finland today 
decide to come out and say no to the abduction that happened in Nere Hotel. And we, are calling we stand together today with our leaders in Nigeria. And uh, the few of us who are here in Helsinki to stand up and join us in this fight. To join so our voice and say no to the dictator in Yaoundé. Must be liberated unconditionally. They must be liberated unconditionally. Conditionally. They must be liberated unconditionally. Ambassador must be free. free. What do we want? Freedom. What do we want? Freedom. Ambassador must be free. I, I there was a particular case. That, I, that it totally got my attention, and there was a lesson. There was a lesson in 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 um, in one of the rallies that I watched, and I'm talking about our compatriots in Finland. You watched them, yeah, the people in Helsinki. Yes, and uh, you know they, they remind us, they remind me of us. You know, in sub degree temperatures. Yes, they are out there. Their hands are freezing. Uh, it is cold, but they the resolve. That the fact that the, our leaders are in the dungeons of our republic, our people are being killed, and all of that, and it tells them that no matter how cold it is, they cannot sit home on this day. No, they have to be out there and tell the world and tell the people of Finland, the people of Helsinki, what Release. is happening to our people Release. and what, and that they need to do something Freedom. about it. And Freedom. talking about uh, 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 bringing no. attention. To, to you, just look at their numbers. There were about seven of them. Yes. But when people of that community look at people being out there at those sub degree temperatures, they know that no, there is something cooking. They know that there's something wrong. Yes, they know there's yes. something amiss. Yes. And they, they will pay attention to it. They want to know why would these people risk their lives to, to, to get frostbite and all those things to be outside. That would pick their attention, and I want to really uh, commend the effort of our brothers in Finland in Helsinki for going out there and, and, and defying those sub-degree temperatures to go and make a statement for our people in prison. I think uh, Seseko, who was inspired by uh, our vi our videos in the cold temp December temperature here in Minnesota to go out and be a leader in this revolution will be very very impressed and will be smiling in, the, in, in wherever it is in the republic yes i also wanted to add that uh and this is the lesson that i'm that i, that I was talking about that when we come together during these rallies we're not coming on, on we're not coming only to inform the world we're coming to to commune to commune with each other mm -hmm. we're coming to 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 you know, there's this, there's, this, there's this thing that the Bible always talks about, that when you bring many, many, many charcoals together, they, they burn hotter and they burn brighter. Mm -hmm. and, and by themselves in their separate locations, they will fade out faster. And they can generate the amount of heat and steam yes. to move the string. Yes, and so when, when, when I saw my, my, my brothers and sisters come together in Helsinki, it, 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 um, it, it passed on a message that you don't have to be in Washington DC or in London or in Toronto to go out and make a statement about the plight of our people. Do it where you are, no matter how you want to do it. Just do it. And when you do it, share. Because in today's world, like, like you were saying, we are, we are able to see them. Mm -hmm. and, 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 we, and I can tell you what. We participated in that event. There were seven of them, like you said. Mm -hmm. But if you count all of us, you will see that we were more many there sharing the same message about the same struggle. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, Helsinki does not have to be open for business. No. Because for them to be able to go out there. No. And so uh, uh, those who think that uh, Washington has to be open for business, I don't know if they ask the White House if Trump is there before they go. Pick up. The UN needs to speak up. The EU needs to speak up. There should not be selective justice. Our leaders are people. Our leaders are freedom fighters. Freedom fighters cannot sit in jail. That is not where they belong. They need to sit on a round table and make their voices heard. For they were fighting for freedom. They have committed no crime. They have committed no crime. The Republic of Cameroon is committing atrocities. The Republic of Cameroon is committing atrocities. Burning schools. Burning unarmed civilians. And we are defending ourselves. The world must look up. 
The world said never again. And now another Rwanda is taking place in our territory. The world must decide if this is how they have to lead us to die. We must fight for our freedom and we must defend ourselves. We stand with your wife. All the Takumbas in the world, the Finnish Takumbas are sending their greetings. We stand with the women that their husbands are in jail. We feel in their food today. We are putting our legs in their shoes. There's, there used to be an old saying, which is not true today, that if a tree fell in the forest and nobody heard it or saw it, did it really fall? No. No, in today's world, it falls because we have ways of, of amplifying what happens anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is how we learn how, you know, the, the kid in, in the University of Boya who took the first video uh, of, of, of the brutal forces of La Republic Dragging those girls, in dragging them in 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 in, in sewer in, in sewer water. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just that image alone, I have always said, it's, it, it did more damage to the army of it did more damage to the Republic than a battalion of Amber Boys could have. Three times. Okay, no, no, is very freezing here. You can see I'm jogging because of the cold, and some of our comrades are going to come. We are just starting the day here in Helsinki, and uh, no matter the cold, we must come out to join our voice to say no to the um, Cameroon government, and uh, at all costs. So uh, you might not see a million men behind us here today, but um, uh, you know that you cannot, you can always um, take a revolution with just three men who are committed. So we are here today with the freezing temperatures. My hands are frozen, but uh, we have to um, raise awareness, and that's what we are doing in Finland. Amazonia, land of freedom, you shall live in plenty, meeting our name. And your children shall be like the stars above, the most high God being the watchman of this nation. Hooray! The last time we were here in front of Downing Street, we were 600 of us. And, uh, we are, putting, we are putting pressure to bear on the British government to intervene at the level of the UN Security Council to intervene at the, to stop the killings in the southern Cameroons. Um, so here we are in front of Downing Street where the decision was taken in uh, 1960 to attach southern Cameroons to La République du Cameroon. Um, we all know why, those, why that particular decision was taken. There are lots of, um, uh, of, of, of reasons. There are lots of declassified documents from uh, um, the British Cameroons. Um, anyway, we're not going to go into those reasons today. What is most important is to continue the international pressure. And uh, there have been thousands upon thousands of tweets going on. And I'm amazed at finally the British public is waking up all over all over community radio stations people on the streets uh, more and more i'm asking people and they're saying they are aware of what's happening in the southern cameroons and i'm telling you when we're gonna continue with this pressure the regime is gonna buckle cameroon the english speakers of cameroon are gonna have autonomy finally it could either be autonomy as a sovereign state which is what most of the people want or autonomy in some form of confederal agreement with the Cameroon Republic. But one thing is sure, and I had made this prediction to the French ambassador in Brussels a couple of years ago. I said, the Anglophones of Cameroon are going to bring the whole edifice of France Africa down. And this is what we're doing. It looks small, but we are involved in a war bigger than what most of us think of. We are bringing France Africa down by giving autonomy to the Southern Cameroons. Because once autonomy gets to the Southern Cameroons, we're going to have true democracy in French Cameroon. And once we have true democracy in French Cameroon, bye-bye to France Afrique. Bye-bye <laughs> to France Afrique. And London has been a, a, a wonderful, wonderful center of our struggle. We have seen people in London, uh, in front of uh, the, Commonwealth. the Commonwealth, in front of number 10 Downing Street. They've blocked traffic. They've They've taken all the aggressive action. They've been as loud as they, as they, as they can. And, uh, and and they were not absent on this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were out in their numbers. And the police were there too to protect them. 
unlike in La Republic. And uh, they came out and told the world exactly what was happening on that day. And uh, it, it is important too that we recognize that everything that you do, wherever you are, it is important that you bring that attention. Because you don't know who is out there and who is going to pick it up and do what with it. Yes, yes. Uh, let, me, let me ask you though, you know in our struggle, we have mostly blamed the French or, or when people hear from us, uh, they hear a lot about the French. But I think the people in London have a, a, a very special responsibility to drum, uh, to drum the, the mistakes and the irresponsibility and the maltreatment and the use of the word expendable by the British to throw us to the wolf. Yeah. You think that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all of our problems started with the actions of the British. So um, it is important that it should be the center of this struggle. Because until we make the British population very, very uncomfortable, where they have to hold their government accountable. I know there are some MPs that have been calling on the Foreign Secretary now to, to, to do something about what is happening to us. We saw their representative at the United Nations taking some very uh, uh, st strong positions. So the, our, our brothers, our compatriots in the UK, whether it's in, in London itself, or in uh, Ireland or all over the United Kingdom have to do more. They have to put in more and make that place every single time let them hear from us. That is what I'm trying to say. Let them hear from us because when their people get tired of us getting on the streets and interrupting traffic and creating all these problems for them, then they will want to do something about it until you make them uncomfortable that they say, okay, I need to address this problem now so that I can solve it and, and, and be free of all these nuisance. Then we'll be getting somewhere. Now, we've been quite a bit of a nuisance here, honestly. But it's a needed nuisance. Say hello to the police. You know, if we had been in Cameroon today, we would have been catching bullets, we would have been catching hell. Hello. Do you know what's happening in, in Cameroon? No. Yes. Um, we are bringing pressure on the British government to intervene because I come from a territory that used to be, oh, blimey, my patry. What is it that we, I mean, let me ask you this. What is it that we want the British to do? Well, the British have a role in what is happening in, with us today. Mm -hmm. Because remember, that when all of this was done, however they did it, uh, with the, the resolutions in 1608 and all those things, in the resolution of the United Nations, and the, the British were supposed to be part of the meeting that was supposed to sit down and set up how this union of the Republic was supposed to function. Mm -hmm. And they were absent. They were in, not in that meeting. Now let me ask you, though. yes, that is the history of it. What is it that we expect the British to do now? What is it that the British can do? Well, what they can do is... Do we, do we know or they should figure out what to do? No. They, every... They, you have the United Nations. You have all these killings. They can hold our Republic accountable for what they are doing to us. They can push the United Nations or whatever to come and see how we can solve the problem. They can call for a mediation. They can, they, uh, there is a lot that they can do and which they have done in other places. So you cannot just be asking us, what do we expect the British to do? No, they are the ones that created this problem. Why we are holding them responsible is because they created the problem. They are in the United Nations Security Council. They are the member of the United Nations. So they have a lot of responsibility to us to, be, to, to redress this situation. Uh, they are a member of the international community. They are a member of the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth has some laws that every member of that organization is supposed to, to, to abide by. La Republic has not been abiding by those laws. And the United Kingdom has not done anything. They have not suspended them. They have not sanctioned them. They have not done anything. Yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. But here, here's what I... Here, here's what... Um, here's where I'm driving, okay? Because we know what we want. We want the independence that we should have gotten in 1960. Not even 1961. We should have been given our independence in 1960, like 
Nigeria and La Republic were, were and La Republic's own independence was going on. But ours postponed because they were playing games with us. You know what I'm saying? So what we really want is our independence. How the British figure out how to make that happen is is it really our responsibility? No, it is their responsibility. It is their responsibility. And, and that is why we have to get in there and make them uncomfortable so that they know that they have to address until they address this problem, they will not have peace. They will not have any sleep in their eyes. Yes. Because 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 um when you when you you know A crime committed is a crime committed. A wrong done is a wrong done, and that needs to be redressed. It doesn't matter how long. In no other country in the world is a linguistic, an English-speaking linguistic mi minority discriminated against and disadvantaged as they are in the Cameroon. And how can this house, regardless of its historical responsibilities, as are the uh, holders of the mandate, which led to the creation uh, of a, a federal Cameroon after independence. Regardless of our responsibilities there, how can we stand by to see English people discriminated in this way? But equally, how can we stand by with the universal right uh, that uh, we are ob obliged to accept, the rights of people to protection? How can we stand by and allow this to happen? I listened to the... To the uh to, to, to the Lord who introduced that matter in, in the House of Lords, he made a statement that, oh, we cannot go back. My Lords, we have a choice. We cannot revisit the wrongs of yesteryear in the plebiscite, in the flawed referendum and all of that, in the withdrawal from imperial responsibility. We cannot revisit that to any useful purpose. From the way I understood it, that they cannot go back to give us what we what we deserved in 1960 or 1961 no and i'm saying no no yes we deserve it I'm, see they were trying to solve a problem and the solution they gave us because we were supposed by you and uh, by, by 76b to either have an independence or self-government today we're neither independent nor self-governing the anglophone communities in that country see their rights, see their expectations of a prosperous and safe life trampled underfoot. My Lords, this crisis has its origins in a plebiscite of 1961 which I, in my own childhood, in the region at the time, recall as being of concern then, certainly to the region, to my father, who was a cabinet minister in a neighboring country, but also and significantly to members of this house and the other place, who saw in a flawed plebiscite that posed simply a binary question to the English-speaking regions of the Cameroon, join Nigeria or join Francophone Cameroon. That was the choice that was given them. They were not given the choice to form their own independent state. My Lords, we live with the legacy of that plebiscite in the plight of the peoples of the Cameroon and the English-speaking peoples of the Cameroon in particular to this day. And I will keep emphasizing to our people that we are the ones who are going to determine what happens to us. Those people are going to be facilitators. They don't have, they don't have the decision-making authority. You have the decision-making authority because you are the ones who are going to decide where it is comfortable for you to be your own people. It is not going to be some MP in Britain or so if some United States Senator. Yeah, they can go out there and say what they want because it is politically convenient for them. But your actions and determinations is going to define what happens to you. South Sudan is an example. East Timor and all those other places. Uh, Eritrea, you, you, can, you can keep naming them. Uh, Gambia used to be with Senegal. 
all of those things happen because those people decided that we've had enough of this and it is going to happen and i'm really glad you used the word facilitator because like roger just very clearly stated until we reach boya until we reach boya we will never never leave our journey halfway oh until we reach boya so yes the british can make it easy for us or they can make it difficult but this will not stop until we get to boya where we're where we where we're supposed to be in 1961. we are shouting for justice for naira 10. there was something special about washington dc i think the one in washington dc was organized by women and they they led the whole thing Hello sister, I just want to find out why are you here? that we are here under this cold Southern Cameroonians we are just here fighting for our freedom today is the fifth the days our leaders will be taken from Nere or taken Nigeria to Cameroon by the evil dictatorship of President Paul Bia we are here to celebrate their one year in prison but we know by God's grace Ambazonia will be free. Amen. We know the God that we are saving. Amen. Our people have lost their lives. Our families are in bushes. We are here in diaspora praying and fighting for them. And God is going to keep them through. As God knows the people from the Egyptians, the land of Egypt, that is what he is going to do to us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sister Flo. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to find out why you're here. I'm here because we are here to commemorate the, the illegal incarceration of our leaders in Kondengi. And uh, we are here to send a very powerful message to the world that what the tyrant in Kondengi, in uh, A2D, name Bia Bivondo is doing is very wrong and we are sending a message to the international community at large to get in action and start working because what Bia is doing is an atrocity beyond human comprehension. We want the world to do something and as quickly as possible. We are urging the world to do something as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why are our sisters? Why I'm saying mothers and sisters? Because you people are the one that deliver most children that they have been killed. So I want to ask you, why are you here this morning? Oh, I'm very happy to be here this morning. My intention to be here is to also show my worries and how I am very, very unhappy with what is happening in our country. My plea here is that the Cameroon government should release our children and husband so that we should renew, reunite and build our own country in a way that we will be very transparent okay, uh, and please, also to ladies and gentlemen, the other nations this, this event we are waiting on JC JC to come and then I, please I am very happy can we, can we come over everybody God, can we come over this project will be realized very soon Yes, sister, I just want to ask you a question. I know that you're one of the mother. 
that support this group very powerful. I want to ask you why are you here? I'm here for several reasons. I'm here because I am tired. I'm an Amazonian and I'm tired of everything that we've been going through for 56 years we've been marginalized and it's gone it becomes a time when you tell yourself you push somebody to the wall so much so that they will wake up one day and they will say no one enough is enough and that is why we as Anglophones, we as southern Cameroonians, we are out here today the Cameroon uh people has done it we started begging them asking them to please help us Give us equality, that's all we ask for. Give us better schools. Our systems were broken and everything was shattered. And we asked them just to give us equally because it was an equal partnership we came into. And we've been marginalized for 56 years. So when we rose up to ask, what did they do? They turned around and killed our children, burned our villages and molested our children. And even abducted our leaders. And today is the anniversary and we are out here to tell them that enough is enough. We want the unconditional release of every child, our leaders and everybody that has been abducted and locked up about or for this struggle. And today we are out to tell the whole world that they should know they are silent about this and people are being killed, burnt down in houses, roasted, chemical weapons used against people and the world is still silent. What much more do we have to show them that we are being, this is a Rwanda actually. So today we are out to support our leaders and our brothers and sisters who are in the forest and languishing in jail. That today enough is enough. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay, sister. As a little girl. I want to find out why are you here this morning? This morning we are fighting for our president Sisi and we want Kobia to release him immediately without any condition. We are very angry because our brothers and sisters they are dying. Oh, we are crying here. They don't know how we feel the face. Our people are home. They are so we love our country. We love Amana. I'm seeing you, you are very serious. Yes. Why are you serious? Well, I'm very serious because what Pobia has done is inhuman. And we need change. Yeah. By power, by force, we have, we have it. Thank you. Amen. That is Amber talking. Amber women. They are the best. Amber women are very strong. Amber children are very strong, followed by their husband and brother. Please, before we go, Mrs. Sesekwa, your father Julius is here. I have to tell you a little bit about seeing as a family. So we're going to go uh, from uh, Africa to Mexico. The wife is back from Nara for you know her. She's here. So we'll go over to U.S. Capitol. For those who are following live, don't forget, we're going to U.S. Capitol right now.
coming up with us. He was making sure that we are we are okay, we fine, we're doing great. God bless you so much. Have your number. I'm gonna give you a call. Thank you so much. We know how it is, and of course the uh, the sister to uh, the Dr. Fidelis as well. So it's uh, very touching. And this is uh, the wife of Pa Fongala. For we of course we already introduced the wife of uh, our president, Mrs. Sekwa Yoktabe Julius. And don't forget, a lot of you you have been hearing this very powerful woman who makes the most you know the audios that will shake you. You know the. Powerful mangan is also here. Can you put your hands together for mangan? This mangan. Can you clap for mangan, you you for mangan please? Thank you so much. This is mangan. Look at her. She's young and pretty, beautiful. She's here. So I want to thank you so much. Woman, hey. Hey. Woman, hey. Um.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. I say no more. Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. I say no more. Oh, Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. Mukamba to with the Lord. I say no more. Oh, which is tried and failed. Don't go try it on the fair. Be a try it on the fair. I said nobody. Come battle with the law. Come battle with the law. Come battle with the law. I say nobody. Oh, who can battle with the law? Who can battle with the law? Who can battle with the law? I say nobody. Come on, sing it. Sing it, sing it. Sing it, sing it. Who can with the Lord? Who can with the Lord? Who can with the Lord? I say no. Who is tried and defeated? Colonia tried and defeated. Who can with the Lord? Who can with the Lord? Who can with the Lord? I say no. Who can with the Lord? Who can with the Lord? Who can battle with a God? Amen. Amen. No man can battle with God. Amen. Now, the public have trained soldiers, yes. but we have the armies of God. Yes. And once we have the armies of God, they must overtake the Egyptians. Yes. If you believe it, shout a louder hallelujah. hallelujah. We don't have the equipment that they have, but we have the sword of God and five stones. The stones that David used to bring down Goliath. That's the stone we are going to use to bring down our Republic. That is the stone we are going to destroy Yaoundé. That is the stone we are going to destroy France. No matter how many troops they send to Saudi Cameroon, we are going to use five stones and destroy them. Every helicopter that they will send in Amazonia territory, we will bring them down with five stones in the name of Jesus. The Bible says when they gather together, they agree and greater things were happening. As we have gathered together as women who gave birth to those children that are being killed, we agree and we decree and it will be established in heaven. Say every plan of the enemies to wipe us out, we wipe them out in the name of Jesus. Every strategies of the wicked ones that they are gathering in France, in Yaoundé, in Chad, as we have learned that they have sent 2,000 Chadians to go into our territory. We have not gone to Chad to look for war. Chadians have come into our territory to kill our brothers and sisters. We agree as women. We agree as women. We agree as women. That whoever Chadian that left his territory to trace into our territory, let the Holy Ghost fire consume them in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, locate them and consume them in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, any car, any ammo car that they will use to trespass into our territory. We are not going to their territory. They are going to our territory. My Father, my God, we declare and we decree. According to your word, you say, call on me in terms of trouble and I will answer you. My Father, my God, Ambazonia sons and daughters, women and wives of our leaders that have been arrested and kept in dungeon. My Father, King of glory, ancient of days, you have never failed us. Let your fire consume the enemy. Let your fire consume the enemy. Let your fire consume the enemy. In the name of Jesus. As you gave assurance to the Israelites, you are giving us assurance as Ambazonians. Father, you alone we trust. You alone we believe. We know with God everything is possible. Because you have never changed and you have never failed. Ancients of days, Jehovah God, we are gathered to here as one family. We are gathered here in one accord. We are gathered here in one spirit. Trusting and believing you for unchangeable things, for unmovable things, for the impossibility. Father, release our leaders. Release our brothers. Release our brothers and sisters. We don't have lawyers. We don't have judges. But we have God. Who is the great judge? Who is the great judge? Who controls the heaven and the earth? Who controls the heart of men? Who controls the universe? Father, intervene. Father, intervene. With you, everything is possible. 
Look at our mothers. Look at our brothers and sisters. The Bible says a man will leave his whole family. He will click to his wife and they will become one. The devil has come in between them to separate them from their husbands. My father, my God. You say what you have put asunder, no man can put asunder. What you have put together, let no man put asunder. My father, let your will be done in this case. Let your will be done in this case. Let your will be done in this case. Give your judgment. Father, give your judgment. Everywhere that the enemy is using any of us to manipulate, to set confusion among us. My Father, my God, arrest those enemies. 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 In the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, I say they will never agree. As women, we stand in the gap among our husbands. We stand in the gap among our children. We stand in the gap among our leaders. We stand on their behalf. The Bible says, call the wailing women. Let them come out in their numbers and wail unto me and I will answer them. Father, we have come out in our numbers and we are wailing as women of Ambazonia. Calling on you, Jehovah God. Calling on you, Jehovah God. Calling on you, Jehovah God. We need your strength. We need your strength. We need your strength. We pray for our fighters in Ground Zero. Yes. My Father, my Father, give them wisdom. Give them direction. Give them new tactics. Let them overcome the Egyptians. Let them overcome the Egyptians. Let them overcome the Egyptians. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says thousands will come around you, but they will not come close to you. You say you will see them, but they will not come close to you. As they flood in our territory, you will consume them by fire. You will consume them by fire. You will consume them by fire. In the name of Jesus. We declare that October 1st, 2019, we are going to go here, whether the devil like it or not. We are going to go here, whether the devil like it or not. In the name of Jesus. We are going to go here, whether the devil like it or not. In the name of Jesus. And probably enough is enough. Your time is up and your time is up now. Your time is up and your time is up now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We cover this day with the blood of Jesus. We cover the event with the blood of Jesus. We cover all our leaders with the blood of Jesus. President Seseko Ayo, we cover you and your leaders with the blood of Jesus. We cover Dr. Sako and his leaders with the blood of Jesus. We cover our women, brothers and sisters with the blood of Jesus. Any weapon formed against us shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Any agent of the Republic that has been assigned to come and poison any of us in the diaspora. We prostrate them in the name of Jesus. We prostrate them in the name of Jesus. We prostrate them in the name of Jesus. Let your will alone be done, O God. We cover the land of Amazonia with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus surpass all other blood. We surpass all other blood. We cover it with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, we are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, my Lord. We just listened to, to a whole prayer there. That prayer was long. Tell me the role of religion in the struggle. Well, um, I don't know about how religion, people have to pray. People, there are people who believe that there can be some divine intervention 
and uh, we can pray to our ancestors and implore them to come and give us the energy to go out and the, the ability to communicate and uh, the, the know-how to tell the world what is happening to us. So uh, prayer can be a powerful thing for those who believe in it and um, for those who believe in our ancestors we can always call on them to come and uh, give us some wisdom and help us guide us in whatever, whatever efforts we are doing. Well, I'll tell you what I think about prayers, okay? Um, what prayers does, and I've, and I've listened to many prayers, um, and, and, and sometimes when people are in a prayer, after the end of the prayer, you can, in fact, some prayers are good and some are not good, but they're all prayers to God. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why some are good and some are not, not good is because he who communicates the true feelings and the concerns of, of those gathered is always called a good prayer. Those who talk to God without necessarily connecting the concerns and the, and the, and the feelings of that gathering is just a prayer. And people say amen and then go to their thing. Mm -hmm. so so prayers is part of reminding us what our problems are what our solutions are whether there's divine intervention or not is is really is really not that important if you ask me because the people who pray and those who listen to the prayer do know that they would have to do something if they want change I don't know if anybody has ever prayed and then go and, and stayed at home and, and wait for God to come and help because uh, like most people will always say, God works through people. Mm -hmm. And I think that prayers has a role to play in terms of reminding us what we need to do, where we're trying to go, and also again, stiffen our resolve, uh, knowing that uh, there's a bigger force, either the force of 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 the of of God, the religious, the the Christian God, or the force of our ancestors, but there's something spiritual, there's something bigger than us that is with us, and um, you know, in economics they talk about the invisible hand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that in religion and prayers, there is that invisible hand that believers also think about. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you help me with anything else on that? No. All right, thank you. Thank you, powerful Ambazonians. Let the world know that if there are a people who will not give up, it's Ambazonians. And today is a sad day. A day we remember with sadness. First of all, I want us to respect these women, pillars of Ambazonia, these excellencies. You are excellencies. Thank you for standing behind our leader, His Excellency Seseko Ayokabe Jr. And thank you for standing.
standing behind the other excellencies that are in jail. And they have been put in jail by some unexcellencies. And I want to thank you for everything you have gone through, but I want to say that's just the prize. The one thing, when you have paid the price, you will get the trophy. Yes. Yes. There is a trophy, yes. and that trophy is Ambazonia. Yes. I can assure you we are going to Boya. Yes. Yes. When we get to Boya, we shall tell different stories. Yes. The one story shall cut across. We will say victory at last. Yes. We will say victory at last. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking to those who can pray. That's why I said hallelujah. Continue to pray because we can do our best. But if God does not intervene, we will get to nowhere. And I want to hold you accountable, the church. You should pray for us and pray for our leaders like never before. This day is the day of justice. The justice day in Amazonia. Because injustice was done to our leader and his cabinet on this day one year exactly today and if there's injustice in one part of the world there is there is injustice everywhere in the world if there's injustice in Amazonia there is injustice everywhere in the world unless the world wants to tell us that we are not human enough unless the world wants to say that Amazonia is not part of the human race because Injustice to one is injustice to all. Injustice was done to us. It was done to us on the 5th of January in Nigeria. And let everyone know this. Number one, it was injustice for anybody to abduct our leaders in a foreign land where they were refugees. It was injustice to extradite them to Cameroon, La Republic, without a treaty of union. It was injustice for them to decide to keep them incommunicado for nine months. It was injustice for them to decide to try them in a foreign country. It is still injustice today that they are refused justice as it's supposed to be. All of us here are prisoners. They are only in a superior prison. We are all prisoners because you cannot go home. You are in a large prison with a large env uh, um, uh, space because you can't go back to your country. I can't go back. You can't go back. We are prisoners. We are calling on the world that enough is enough. Let them tell Paul Bia, let our leaders free now. And let Amazonia free now. We are tired of this prison. We are tired of this prison. Let the world hear us. If you are among the two million Amazonians in the diaspora, listen, you are all prisoners. I don't know why only this number can come and demonstrate. How can you be comfortable at home thinking we are talking about some 11, some 10, or 39, or how many in the prison? No, we are all prisoners. If we don't fight this fight, we will die in prison. Yes. Yes. If we don't win this war, we will die in prison. Yes. We must win. Yes. We must win. Yes. We want to thank Donald Trump for what he is doing. Yes. Standing for something. It's better to stand for something than to stand for nothing. Yes. He has shown us that he has the guts. Yes. The guts to do what he thinks is right. Yes. And Bazonia are asking you, President Trump, that genocide is going on in southern Cameroon and it is evil. We know that by your Christian values, you will stand for southern Cameroon. Yes. And we are calling you to intervene unilaterally today. Today, oh, hear our, our cry. Yes. Donald Trump, United States of America, the Senate of America, hear our cry. Yes. We are inviting you to intervene unilaterally. Yes. You don't need the United Nations to do this. Yes. You don't need the Security Council to do this. Yes. You are America, yes. the hope of the world. Yes. We need you now. Yes. Please, Donald Trump, intervene unilaterally. Yes. We are inviting you. They are killing our children. They are killing our mothers. They are roasting them in their houses. They are destroying our cities. They are burning down our villages. They have destroyed our lives. Eight million, ten million of ours. Please, please, intervene.
Intervene now. Intervene now. Intervene now. So I want to advise, I want to invite you. The best way to fight injustice is to invest in justice. Thank you. So let's go to Canada. Free my people now. Go down, go down, go down to your wounded and tell me now. Here is the voice from Toronto. Free my people now. Here is the voice from Toronto. Free my people now. Go down, go down, go down, go down to your wounded and tell me now. Be a free my people now. Get it the voice from Kondengi. Free my people now. Get it the voice from the prisons. Free my people now. Go now. Go down, go down. Go down to your wounded and tell me ya. Be a free my people now. Get it the voice from the prisons. Free my people now. Get it the voice from the forest. Free my people now. Go now. Go down, go down. Go down to your wounded and tell me ya. Be a free my people now. Go down. Go down. Go down, go down to your wounded and tell me, be a free my people now. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Ambassador must be free. We are the light of the world. Ambassador is built on a hill and it cannot be hidden. Yes. On this day of Seseko, of Seseko and his uh, compatriots' adoption from Nigeria, the people in Canada demonstrated both in songs, in spirit. I, I mean, their messages were. Th those are the only people who actually had pictures spread on the ground at the square, and you saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was powerful because. Uh, you know, they always say that a picture is, means a thousand words. So when you don't only go out there to tell your story, you want people to see documentation of what you are actually saying that has happened to you so that they can take it in because as soon as they see it, it sits in their psyche. And so they begin to ask questions. They want to know more. So that is uh, also a very powerful way to put the message out. Yes. And again, we cannot... We cannot uh, let, let's share in some of the 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 songs that that happened in Canada. Our days 
And your children shall be like the stars above. The most I got be the watchman of this nation. Amazonia, land of freedom. You shall live in place in me in our need. And your children shall be like the stars above. The most I got be the watchman of this nation. We are here. We are ready to form no more yes to no more people. Yes, we are ready to form no more yes to no more people. Oh, yes. But we are must free Siseko. Oh, yes. Our leaders must be free from the dungeons of the Republic of Cameroon. Yes. But the people must be free. Oh, yes. We have come here today to make the world to understand yes. and to have on record that in the French Republic of Cameroon, there is a shit no president no, no, no. for Bobia. Bobia is responsible for the killing, for the mass killings of Amazonians. If you look here, you see people who have been murdered in cold blood. This is just the tip of an iceberg. Thousands of people have fled in neighboring countries to seek refuge. Children are in the forest, being eaten up by animals. Women are babysitting in the forest. Hundreds of villages have been burned down in southern Cameroon. We are found here today to tell Bobia that he must go. He must release our leaders who are held in his dungeons. Siseko yes. must be free, yes or no? Yes. Bath Tata must be free, yes or no? Yes. We are calling from the prisons in the Yabunde that Bobia should let their people go. Yes. We are sick and tired of dictatorship. Yes. We are sick and tired of seeing our people being killed. Yes. We want to go. We want to have an independent country because we are the of the world, right? Yes. So my brothers and sisters who are here today to let Paul be and know that we would never go back to marginalization, to killing, to raping. If you can see by the flags here, you have people from different parts of the country supporting us today. Paul Bia, your time is up. Yes. We are here to make the world know that Amazonia is free. Yes. And you're going to release our leaders. Yes. We are not going to we we'll resist until we are going to resist your illegal treatment until you release our leaders, yes. until you stop the raping, yes. until you stop the killing. Oh, yes. We will not stop everyone. We're going to be here and fight. Yes. So that's why we are here today. Oh, yes. You can see our brothers on the side of the Mongo with the Cameroon flag. You can see the Amazon flying flag flying high. You know we have the support of the world. Yes. You have British flag. You have American flag. So you have Canadian flag. So we are here today to tell Siseko and the rest that we are behind them oh, yes. to give our brothers in ground zero the oh, courage yes. oh, yes. that we will be here and fight. Oh yes! You know how cold it is, it's winter, right? Yes. So we are here. With kids. It's, sure. it's six degrees and we are here. Sure. With kids. So and we are kids. So to show Cameroon that we will fight and fight. The last oh, one that standing. To the last one standing. Yes. Siseko, we are with you. Oh yes! Yes. yes. And we will make sure we go to Boya. Yes. Boya is real. Hello everybody. Thank you all for coming to express your frustration with the PR regime. We want to thank all of you here who are taking your time out to listen to a voice or a word or two from us. If there is one thing you want to take out of this gathering, is that injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. When you pretend that you don't see it, it's going to come and meet you at your doorstep. When the war in Syria started, Canadians never knew and never dreamt that there would be a time that they will be taking in 30 to 35,000 people. This is another genocide going and the world is silent. We are bringing it today to your doorsteps. And I will guarantee you, if you think you've got space for 35,000 Syrians, prepare for 100 or 200,000 Cameroonians. If a genocide is going on in our land and people think we'll sit quiet or pretend they won't show it in the media, we are privileged in this day and age to have other forms on social media. There is no excuse why anybody will say they don't know that there's a genocide going on in southern Cameroon. There is no excuse for anybody to be quiet when people are arrested and locked up and prevented from seeing lawyers or their family members. There is no excuse for people to give when they know that their word or a tweet 
or an email can make a change. Change doesn't come when those at the top decide. Change is going to come when we decide. Ayub Tabe was locked up for his conscience and his political ideas. He was not locked up because he was a terrorist. He was never locked up because he killed somebody. He was never locked up because he pulled the trigger on anybody. He was never even locked up because he supported somebody from picking up us. We are not going to sit and see such injustice go ahead while the government of Canada thinks they are monitoring the situation. When you have a situation where 100 people die in a week, when you have a situation where people are burned down in their own houses, when you have a situation where the military raises down villages with fire, and people, the United Nations, African Union, and every other association that we put our trust in, turn around and say they are monitoring the situation, then they will push us out to come out here and tell the world that what is going in Southern Cameroon is unacceptable. The tables are now changing. At first, it was all about the Amazonians. But today, we have our friends across the Congo who have decided and they know that putting Ayub Tabe in jail is not a benefit for anybody. Ayub Tabe being in jail does not benefit any peace-loving Cameroonian. Any Amazonian who is in jail today does not benefit anybody and we have to stand up to them. This is just the beginning. Gentlemen, we have a long way to go until we reach Boya. If you are tired now, please take a step back, bring it, and let's say until we reach Boya. Until we reach Boya, we will never live in the journey halfway. Until we reach Boya, we will never live in the journey halfway. Until we reach Boya, we will never, never leave our journey halfway. Oh, until we reach Boya, we will never, never leave our journey halfway. Oh, until we reach Boya. In in Canada, there were citizens of the Republic who also showed up. Let, let's listen to what they, they said. We have one of our sympathizers here. He doesn't agree with everything that I agree on, but he agrees that everybody who is in prison from Southern Cameroon has to be free. I want all of you to give him uh, the opportunity. He wants to say some words, either in French or in English. We are going to listen to you. Again, thank you so much for coming. In French, in French. Oh, in French is good. In French is good. Okay. Now. What's happened? Yeah. You just change it. Okay. Well, we are deprived you of your ration. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to thank anyone here, guys, uh, to brave the call and to be out here today, uh, so that together we can francophone and anglophone, what they say, can get together to tell the world that we can sit together and think. Now, one of the reason, or one of the reason why I'm here today, is just because of the fact that they have adopted those leader, and they are they've been in jail now for a year. And before they went to jail, I was personally talking with some of them, and then it is for me a pleasure to share this with you guys today, uh, so that they can know that we're still in a fight. We're still in a fight together. Uh, another thing is to tell you that uh, you all know what we did uh, on Saturday, sorry, on Sunday the 30th, uh, raising a bit of money to send to those who are. Uh, 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 yes, just a bit. I can tell you that at, for, as for now, we have about $6,000 that we managed to raise. And you will get all the details. I mean, uh, next weekend, by next weekend, you get all the details. We're still getting the stuff, we're still, still getting uh, clothes, uh, shoes, and also things like uh, toothpaste and small things like that. But if you can bring them, guys, we are willing to take them back home and give them to the IA Foundation. We're going to distribute them so that we can together help in our way. Donc c'est un plaisir pour moi, les amis, d'être ici aujourd'hui pour faire part de cet événement. 
Un événement que nous avons tous commencé, moi personnellement, l'avoir commencé depuis 2016, euh, avoir personnellement discuté avec certains des leaders qui sont actuellement en prison, avec d'autres qui s'annoncent, qui sont sortis. Et euh, je voudrais juste leur annoncer que je continue à être dans la lutte. C'est une lutte que nous allons ensemble gagner, c'est une lutte contre une seule personne. Je pense que c'est une lutte contre Paul Bia. Une lutte contre Paul Bia. Après qu'il soit parti, je suis convaincu qu'ensemble nous allons nous asseoir et allons discuter de ce que sera la suite de ce pays-là. Et peut-être que les choses pourront surprendre une ou deux personnes. Donc, je veux insister qu'on continue à bagarrer, qu'on continue à résister, qu'on continue à rester dans la rue. S'il faut qu'on reste dans la rue pour dire ça, on doit le faire. Mais en même temps, je voudrais demander aux gens de penser, de commencer à se mettre sur pied des stratégies qui vont nous permettre d'accélérer le processus de faire partir le dictateur. Donc, euh, je suis là aujourd'hui pour dire nous sommes ensemble et que dorénavant, nous serons ensemble pour tous les autres événements qui seront mis sur pied pour qu'on puisse ensemble voir ce qu'il y a à faire pour faire partir le dictateur. Je suis avec vous. Nous sommes avec tout le monde ici et nous serons davantage plus nombreux à faire partie de cette revendication de la résistance. Merci. Bien, bonjour. 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 Yeah, for past six years or seven years, that is what the person should. But it's our duty to make sure that the person is gone. Yes. I just want our brothers from East of Mongo to know that Cameroon is too. When I'm in East of Mongo. And I want you people to support us uh, on the level of That's a Congo. one man army from Congo. Join and have faith. It doesn't matter the population. You can do it. Because it doesn't we are fighting for the youth. A one the man army from Congo. Is the future is it doesn't not matter. Yes. The future now is ours. So, join us on the level of labor. Let's go on the street and protest. And also encourage the youth back home that there is no need for them to go out and march for a level of February. Because that is a new day. Why are they marching and why are they celebrating? We should go our house together. You guys should go for ghost town on, on that day. There should be ghost town in the streets of Morocco. And if there is ghost town, then we can walk hand to hand and we'll make sure that that guy will step down. You guys should go on online, go on Facebook, go on. Go down a lot of February. There is no need to celebrate a lot of February in Cameroon. The youth, there is no future for the youth, but there is but there is future for the old. So that is a message that I want to pass it today. Let's join our hands together and fight and to see that that country return back with peace and harmony. Thank you. What do you think? Yeah, well, um, we are glad that uh, they showed up and they recognize that we are in a fight, even though they, they think the, the interesting thing that he said is that at this point, they know too that they are in a fight. So this probably is a different species of a uh, public citizen mm -hmm. because he has not been eating sardines and bread, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. his, his mind is probably where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that he said to me is that let us come together and defeat this common enemy and then we can sit down and figure out what the nature of that country is going to be uh, uh, did you did you mm -hmm. so when when he said that to me is different from some of those people who sit down who are buried their head in the sand and they are saying that uh Cameroon is one and indivisible. Mm -hmm. and so, that, so that's the interesting thing to me. Mm -hmm. Because those are people who are willing to learn, who are willing to look at the facts. Because the facts don't lie. Mm -hmm. you, you can go from here to the moon and back. One plus one will still be equal to two. Yes. It would never change. Yes. And the day will have still 24 hours in a day. It will never change. 
The night might be longer and the day might be shorter in some parts of the world, but it will still be 24 hours. That is a fact of life. Yes. So this guy just came out and recognized that fact. That yes, we had come together and there were certain conditions that were supposed to be met. And those conditions on what probably met. And they have brought us these problems. But there is a common enemy that we can defeat that enemy and then see how we can move forward. So to me, that is somebody that uh, I can respect that his head has not been twisted. But the fact of the matter is that we actually do not really have anything to do with uh, uh, chasing this guy out of power. Now, mm -hmm. that, that to me, that is because that message should be addressed to his fellow La Republic citizens. I, I totally agree with you. And let me, let me say something else. You know, as I was listening to the songs, I was listening to the songs, I heard one where people say, uh, uh, they were talking about Bia and what was that song? Bia must go. Yeah, Bia must go. No, Bia can stay there all his life. We are done with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bia, now, I'm, I haven't said that. Let me say this. I, I heard very clearly what you said about the Cameroonian person who was in Canada. Mm -hmm. I heard him. But I can tell you one thing. That I worry. I worry anytime there's a Francophone, there's a person or like a, there's a citizen of like a public trying to come into our struggle at any level or within any means because they have always disappointed us. You know, even Ghana, Patrice Ghana, mm -hmm. Patrice Ghana came and he, 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 he acted or he played like he understood our struggle. He's with us. But I can tell you that when Kamto came up, he went on his website and he said, uh, uh, he started wanting Ambazonians to come and join that, that their chasseman or whatever they were calling it. And, and, and he actually wrote there that if you don't, if you're not for this, then he'll ban you from his website. So these people have always failed us. I also remember another thing. When Kamsa in 1990, I, I remember Joe Mancho was the one who was the, 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 the president of Kamsa at the time. There was this guy in Germany who came and they were working very closely together, but I can tell you what. They only work with us when, when, it benefits them. when it benefits them. Immediately they find something that, that, that will take them away. They are gone. And before they go, they have already gotten a lot of our information. And so, 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 you know, I don't want to, 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 um, to not say the guy shouldn't have said what he's saying. No, well, but so I want our people to know that the people of La Republic have never, ever helped us in any way. They will come in, they'll be nice, but when, but when, uh, but, 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 but immediately, immediately things, things become a little rough or, or they find it better for themselves, they are gone. Yeah, well, uh, we are, you know, it has taken us 57 years to finally uh, come out of that smoke screen. Yes. So we, we know what it is now. And that is why we can tell them in, in their faces. Yes. You know, this is not the first time. I mean, I told you in the summer of uh, 2017, I believe, yes, the summer of 2017, they had a diaspora meeting in France. Mm -hmm. And in that meeting, they requested us to come and join, to get beer out for them. And we said no. Then they said, okay, let us come and join them. We said no. Yeah, they wanted us to come and fight their fights. Yeah, so... Uh, we will not be doing that. Yes, yeah, so they have, a, they have a duty, they have a fight, and they are going to fight. I mean, we, we need allies, no doubt. We need allies, but all of us now have a problem, and everybody is going to pick up their own trouble. You have to carry your own weight. Yes. Uh, so, yes. because uh, my own weight is on my head now, it's heavier, and I'm not going to add yours to it. I mean, uh, if you picked up, because this is what I, and I, I have, I've, I've been speaking to one of these, my German friends, because he sent me a message this morning, and that is what he was saying, that uh, we need to uh, work with these guys and see, and the question I asked him is that, for all this time, the past two years plus, that we have been fighting these people, have you seen any person from La Republic there, just a few of them? 
who have come out to decry the atrocities that the Republic has committed on us. You saw what happened in Bangura and that we just talked about earlier today. Yes. Have you seen any of them come out to say, no, you don't treat your people, your own brothers, the people you call your brothers like this? No, they have not done that. So anytime they want to come out and ask for a hand in cooperation, you should look at that suspect. Yes. Because actions speak louder than words. Their actions so far have been, they have called on the government to eradicate all of us because there was never anything like a, a southern, we, are, we were all beer friends, according to what they said. So their actions should tell you who they are. And remember, we always say, fool me once, shame on, on, on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yes, they are misinformed people, they are miseducated people, they have been trained to be followers, they have been trained that uh, uh, initiatives come from above, not from below, and uh, they are shocked by, by what we do. They don't know what makes us do what we do. And that's why they keep trying to bring us to come and be part of them in order to solve their problem. We democratize, we democratize their Cameroon for them. We've, we've, do you know that before SDF came and did some of what they did to, 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 to change that place, you needed an exit visa before you can leave. You know what I'm saying? So we've given them a lot of freedoms. But all they have, give, they, all they are, they have had for us is, is, is bad faith, bad will. And uh, those who want to eat with them, you, can, you, you have to eat with a very long spoon. Very, very long spoon. I can tell you another thing. The citizens of La Republic who have been honest about helping us have done it without being even part of us you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. there's one guy who recorded an audio where he was telling us that um that we are doing a good job that the people of la republic are cowards and um and and he was he did not want to call his name because he did not want to be picked up by la republic i don't know if you listen to that audio yes and it's not only him the other journalists i think he's in Kondengi now who used to come out and tell the Republic that the Republic is lying to its people. I think he was picked up, he's in Konegi now. Yes. I've forgotten what his name is. Yes. So th those are true people who know the truth and they are ready to tell their government that this is the truth and you cannot, you cannot bend the truth. Yes, you can't bend the truth. So those who come amongst you and come and try to be you, to a part of you and contribute here and there, it is said that, uh, it is said that when a spy comes amongst you, he becomes the most loyal mm -hmm. to your to your organization. He contributes the most. He does the most work His because time. yes, because through that he will get into the inner circles and 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 get everything that he wants. And once he's done with that, that's when he brings down the organization. So be very careful. So we've talked about Germany. We've talked about uh, Finland. We've talked about London, Washington D.C., uh, uh, Canada. These are not the only places where these events took place. These are just the these are the only places that have actually shared their their videos. Um, I'm sure with time, uh, many more people would like to sh would, would 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 upload theirs. And I'm really encouraging people to to upload them so that we see because uh, uh, one of the things that that we do, pa, if you if you if you actually look at some of these videos, if we are organizing ours next time, I think we we'll, we'll know what to incorporate. Yes, yeah, there's a lot to learn. You know, you always learn from each other. So there's a lot to learn, especially from Germany and the people in uh, Helsinki and probably Canada too. You know, for what, how they put their events together, how the, who they were addressing, and especially the, the German in those communities that speak other languages other than English, mm -hmm. where you have to communicate to the people. So those are things that we can pick up from the Germans and all the other communities. Yes. Okay, um, haven't, haven't looked at all of these, right? Because all of these people were obviously abroad. Um, we've talked about what the lady did in terms of communicating to the Germans, what our problem is. So what, and I think Canadians were doing the same thing. They had a bullhorn where they were very, very eloquent in describing to Canadians what what the problems are and challenging Canadians that they shouldn't say they don't know about these genocides going on in in in, uh, in, in southern Cameroons. Mm -hmm. So with all of this, uh, what is the role of the international community 
uh, in this struggle? Well, the international community is supposed to maintain order and to uphold the rule of law because without law there is no community there is no society there is no state there is no country so when you are talking about the the rule the i am looking about this particular day what is this day supposed to mean to the international community and what it is supposed to mean to the international community is that it is supposed to remind the international community that we are part of this international community. We are stakeholders in this international community and we abide by the laws that the international community has agreed upon. When I say that, I say this because this day on the 5th of January 2018, France Nigeria and La Republic violated international no, law. No, 2017. 2017. This is 2018. Yes, it's a year after. Yes, so it happened in 2018. So Nigeria and La Republic, in, with the support of France, violated international law. That is what yesterday reminds us of. They violated the prince, the United Nations principle of non refoulement that was agreed upon uh, in 1951 under the United Nations Human Rights Commission Conventions, Article 33 sub 1, that says that a country cannot repatriate a, 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 an individual to a country where they are fleeing persecution for their race their religion, their nationality, or for their political beliefs. In our case, it is for our nationality because we have said we are not citizens of La Republic. And those people that were abducted in Nigeria and sent to La Republic yesterday reminds the international community of their responsibility to uphold international law. And what we should have been doing yesterday was to be at the doors of the United Nations because it is the United Nations that defines that principle of non refoulement and they hold the Nigerian government responsible for violating that international law and committing a criminal act. So that is what our demonstrations yesterday were supposed to signify, to demonstrate to the international community that we are law-abiding people. We are a people who have agreed that we are part of this international community. And the international community is supposed to hold its own end of the bargain by holding La Republic and Nigeria responsible for violating those international principles. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you took time to, to give those details. I also want to add to, to what Roger just said is that, uh, what I want to add is that, um, we are part of humanity. We are part of humanity. And, uh, and it seems to me that instead of treating us as part of humanity, we have always been treated as, um, as, um, as something that, these, the, that conspiracies happen. You know, when you talked about Nigeria, uh, France, and La Republic, doing this and 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 there's no uh, 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 there's absolutely no response from the international community it is a conspiracy it's the same as a conspiracy that took place against us in 1961 the same conspiracy that has been taking place i mean the genocide we're talking about now there's a sign i saw with a lady in um, in canada uh, saying saying that the world is ignoring the genocide going on in 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 in, in ambazonia mm -hmm. so there is a conspiracy going on and and that needs to stop because if it doesn't like we have said then the world should really um brace themselves to watch another rwanda happen yeah and uh i would have i i am i am a little bit disappointed 
because you know we have talked about organization how things are supposed to be organized with this day coming up you would have hoped that our refugees in nigeria would have been the people that would have stole the show in this on this day because they themselves are potential victims of this crime that the Republic committed against us. Mm -hmm. And the United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Nigeria, they came and met our leaders and told them that they will never allow La uh, Nigeria to send them back to La Republic. And Nigeria did send them back to La Republic. So I would have expected that all of our refugees in Nigeria would have been at the doors of the United Nations High Commission for Refugees asking them how did our leaders who have been seeking refuge in Nigeria find themselves in the Republic and what is the United Nations High Commission of Refugees in Nigeria doing about it. So to me, uh, that was a shortcoming, but it doesn't take away from what we did, what the rest of the Southern Cameroonians around the world did yesterday. Yes. I would have loved for them to be the highlight of yesterday in Nigeria. Well, you know, <laughs> what they did was they took away the leadership. I don't know if they've developed, any, uh, if they've de developed new leadership. You know, these are refugees. So they are people who have no homes. They have no, no way of, of, of providing for themselves. And so they depend on, on, on their host countries to, to help them. And the host no, country as Nigeria is failing them. You, are not, you, you don't need your host country to help you to go and make a protest. We saw them come out on the 1st of October. Okay. And they celebrated. So let's not give... Let's hope that is a video, though. Yeah. Because I, I'm glad you reminded me of 1st October. Maybe they did, but we just haven't had the video. Um, let's conclude this show. Having sat down in your own... We, we had our own type of uh, Seseko uh, adoption mem remembrance. But having watched what our people did worldwide... How do you feel and what do you think? Oh, like I said, I, I am very, very impressed that we commemorated this day. And as I stated before, I wish uh, we were more organized because we were not really, really organized. We have known this day a year, in, it's, it's a year in coming. I'm glad that the people in Stuttgart uh, did what they did. We have a lot of those dances around our communities and we can always bring them out. So uh, we should organize better. And the people that we have to hold responsible. This is one of those times that we should have been at the United Nations High Commission for Refugees uh, headquarters in Geneva. Yes. Because these are the people that have said that the, all governments of the world have to protect refugees. And they fail not in, on, on this instance. So I, I would hope that next time, we would be asking the United Nations because it is the United Nations to go. They have the powers. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees can go to the Security Council and ask the Security Council to do something about La Republic violating that principle of non refoulement And they have not done that. So we have a responsibility to hold them and Nigeria. Those two people, those are the places where we would have been protesting yesterday to commemorate this day we would have been at their doors even for 24 hours or even before that day we should have been there to make life comfortable for, to, to them and bring you know what these guys did at 10 downing street mm. yes no not at, at the uh, the commonwealth office yes where they block the road yes yes that is what we should have been doing at the united nations high commission for refugees on this day because they, that is the institution that is responsible for the, the agency that is responsible for protecting refugees. And we did not do that. We went to the general public, to the whole world, to tell them that, yes, the Republic needs to, to release our leaders. Yes, we did that. But we have to know to tell the world what law, international law, that was violated so that our leaders can be in, 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 in La Republic. And to add to that, you know, most of uh, the people that they were asking that they should release, they were talking about Seseko and the 10. But you and I know that uh, some of those, our guys came from Taraba. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, to luckily, La Republique has removed them from set where they were in the underground bunker to to Kondengi. Because Seseko, even though they were detained at set, their condition they were they were in a, a, a first class. Mm -hmm. These guys were really in the dungeon. Okay. Because they would eat and sleep on the floor. They would pour water on the floor, and they, they, you can only stand up to go and take a shower. You are either sleeping with your face down in that water. So there are two times that you can get up from there. You get up to either go and eat when they bring you food, or you get up to go and take a shower. So th those are the only two. And this, uh, that cannot be right. That cannot be that cannot be sanctioned by any law in the world. Yes. Yeah, so those are the real heroes. And I am very, very happy. I told you that uh, uh, Friday was one of my happiest days. Yes. Because uh, that is when they got to, uh, to Konengi. And um, so we have to also keep them in our prayers. Because they have come out of that treatment. They will be in very deep medical uh, conditions. So we have to be looking for, where, for ways to provide them some of the medical needs that they will have. And give them some needs because they will have very serious needs after spending a year in that kind of a, a situation. Yes. So I am glad that we did bring up these issues, but always remember that there are not only 10 people that came from Nigeria. There were 47 of them that came from Nigeria. And all of them, they have now left set. None of them died. They are in Kondengi now. Um, thank you for that, for that update. I do think that um, Rogers talked about I asked him to to give us um, a feel of of of, uh, of 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 what happened on on the fifth of January, and he he zeroed in very strongly on 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 a need that should have been fulfilled. Meaning that this day this day was about people who were illegally adopted from Nigeria to La Republic, uh, obviously. He, th he thinks that, and rightly so, that we should have been making that statement at the, at the uh, UN Human Rights Commission. To make that kind of a statement at that location, I, oh, that was very strategic, what you just said. Mm -hmm. But it needed some controlling entity, some, some central power to organize that, and it takes time to organize that so that these things are done. I don't want to go back. This is a day that I want to celebrate what our people... Uh, what our people did because our people did their thing our people were supposed to come out where they were and no matter what town no matter how small the town is no matter how small you guys are come out and make a statement in that town because if we are spread out in the world as we are if we come out wherever we are and, and speak out about our struggle the whole world will know our struggle and that's where we're going to get our solutions because this struggle, Rogers just emphasized something that was not done. And it was not done by somebody, some entity that should have done it. But this struggle in the diaspora has been driven by you and I. It's been driven by us who go on the street, who contribute our little, little pennies. So let's continue to do that. And I think that yesterday, we, for those that we've seen, we came out big time. And we, we let the world know. We did not only come out to let ourselves know that we are together. My, you know, when these people come out, I mean, when, like in Germany, they saw the number, they know that what happened, that the type of camaraderie that was happening in 2017 when Seseko came out, it is still there. We just need somebody or some occasion that brings us out. And when we come out and we're reassured, our struggle is stronger for that. So I am very happy that this struggle is still as strong is still as vibrant in our hearts because like 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 uh, like we know in in other struggles we don't know when this will end but let's continue to keep it in our heart whenever we have an opportunity let's come out not only to tell the world about our problem but also to remind ourselves and assure ourselves that we all are still there and we are still as strong as day one singing that song until we get to boya absolutely and uh, no, when I said what I said, you don't, it's not to take away from that celebratory part of it. No, but it was an important part that you said. I'm not trying to say you didn't say what you need to say. Yes. It was, you, you said the right thing because this struggle is in two levels. 
there's a strategy, there's, there's a core calculating strategy part of it, mm -hmm. which we did mention some in that when we talked about the citizens of La Republic. Mm -hmm. That's something which, even though they are there, we cannot forget who they really are and how we need to treat them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why you just came and reminded that we all did this wonderful job, but, we but it was not complete because we did not go and touch the authority that actually has the power to... to to, to bring the change that we are asking for right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, you know, part of what we do on this show is to educate our people because we believe that it is those people that go out and make those things happen. It is not somebody somewhere. And so when we say this, or when I pointed that out, I am hoping that those leaders in those areas where they are are going to take that message and they will act accordingly for next time. Because when there is not a United Nations High Commission Refugee Office in every part of the world. So like in Minnesota or in Chicago or in Helsinki, if you don't have one there, you will go out as you went out yesterday and, and tell the world. But for those people who live in those areas where there is a United Nations High Commission for Refugees, you go to their offices. And if you have time, even after this day, and you want to organize something, go to their offices. The refugees in Nigeria, you have an obligation. When you have time, you have to be in, your, in their offices, telling them, asking them, are you guys protected under that principle of non refoulement Because you have seen how your leaders and other people have been captured and they have been sent back to the Republic in direct violation of what that agency st stands for. And I'm glad that you're extending that those who are in Geneva or wherever she organize and go there, but somebody, look at it, things don't just happen by you depending on, on, on people's voluntary services. There should be people in our struggle whose responsibility it is to remember these things and make sure they happen. And they shouldn't even do them overnight, but they need to, to have thought about them six months, know that this is coming and this is what we're going to do, uh, educate all of us so that, you know, you, are the, you, you have been crying on, 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 the, on the past episodes that was just a week ago to, to January 5th that people started talking about it. Yeah, yeah. So we need to, we need to, we need to be more, more, we need to be much more in control of this revolution. We cannot just allow things to float. Anything else you want to add? Well, I think um, you said everything. I will always want to thank you people for your sacrifices and your dedication to this struggle. As uh, we all heard in those songs, we will never, never give up until we get to Boya. It is one for all, all for one. Thank you.